everyone. I'm Andrea Osulaban. I'm director at Partnership for the Public Good. I have been with PPG since 2017. Um, and I'll let Deja introduce herself as well. Hi, everybody. My name is Deja James. I am director of policy advancement and media here with PPG. Um, I host our radio show that we have. If folks are maybe newer to PPG and don't know, we have a weekly radio show on Wolfo 96.5. Um, where we have community partners or just those in the community doing work come um, and talk about events or campaigns or ideas um, or things going on in the community. Um, and we also have this lovely community agenda process, which I also help kind of coordinate alongside my colleagues. So very excited for you all to be here and be learning about the process. So Partnership for the Public Good, as many of you will know, is a partner network now of 340 community organizations. That is everything from arts organizations to environmental advocacy groups, block clubs, large health agencies. So it's a really big range of the types of organizations, the type of work they do. Some are very grassroots, some are direct service, some are volunteer lawyer organizations. Um, and we come together uh, to advance a collective mission for a more just, sustainable, and culturally vibrant Buffalo Niagara. And what really drew me to PPG and what I just love about our model is that the heart of our work every year is the community agenda process, where we ask for partners to bring to us what is the one community change that they would want to see at the city, county, or state level? Um, and again, that's the process we'll give an overview of today. Um, and so Deja will go into more detail, but we take those pitches, ultimately leads to a vote. And then that is how PPG divides our own capacity. What are our research staff working on? What are we setting advocacy meetings about? What are we bringing to the media um, in media events. And so again, we'll we'll run down some of that too. Yeah, so as Andrea explained, kind of this is our uh, process on how we set our priorities for the entire year. And so we're in kind of that process of the submission phase. Um, and I'll go, we'll go through important dates in just a second um, and the timeline of everything. Um, but we really have this process so that partners are able to submit ideas that are very much community-based change and policy change for their communities. Um, often community initiatives are, you know, direct service oriented or different things like that. But as people are in direct service or doing work in their own communities or neighborhoods, they're seeing there's a systemic issue here and we want to be able to address that. And so there really was no direct apparatus for um, community members to be able to do something like that. And I think that's where PPG comes in and tries to fill that gap. So we have the submission process where partners are able to submit policy change ideas. Um, we have a few workshops where we have um, partners discuss with each other because some par partners are like veterans in the policy game um, and some are more newer. Um, and so they're able to kind of discuss together Think about um, also with us as a staff, maybe what level of government they'll, their change needs to happen on, fine tune those things, and then it culminates into a vote, this democratic process at the end of um, every year that we do either in November or December where all of our partners are able to see pitches of these planks um, that are two minutes long. We're very strict with the limitations because we often have a lot of planks. Um, and then, you know, there's a vote and the top 10 are then our agenda for that following year. And so that's how that process goes. So that timeline is we're in that September to October phase where people are submitting pitches, refining their ideas, um, trying to figure out what level of government their ask would be on, things like that. Um, we do meet individually with partners. Um, if people need more one-on-one -on -one advice or want to talk through their issue, or we have group settings such as this where people are able to ask each other questions, ask us questions or things like that. We go into November where we will be holding the vote. And then in December, um, we do have a mandatory policy advocacy 101 training for groups that end up on the agenda after the vote. So those top 10 planks 
um, groups that are represented um, by those planks have to go through our training just to learn about local landscape of government, um, also to be able to learn best practices in terms of media engagement around your issue, you know, making talking points, also lobbying with elected officials, different things like that. So we we really, and, and this year we're stuffing it all into one long one day training. So um, we've done it differently in the past. And then in January, um, it all culminates into us announcing the community agenda to the news media, to the press to say, this is what the community has selected as what they want to see for this next year. Um, this is the community's agenda. And so we do that announcement every January with the news, send out a press release and things like that. Um, so that's when that happens. Um, and the important dates are here. We're still trying to determine when the actual partner vote will be. We're just solidifying our location for the vote. Um, but the other dates are here. So the first draft of proposals will be due September 27th. Um, and those will be submitted to me. Um, and my email address is there. We will be sending you all these dates and information after this session. So no need to feel to scramble or screenshot or anything. Um, we will be sending these out. Um, but the first draft is really just for you to submit an idea. And like I said, a lot of the times people need help fine tuning their ask, figuring out what level of government their ask is. And so we have two com agenda committee meetings where you're able to meet with other partners who are also submitting this year, discuss your policy agendas. Sometimes there's multiple groups that maybe care about the waterfront or water equity or care about housing. Um, and so the issues are very similar. And so we try to get those groups to talk together to see if they can combine their ask in some way or if they can work together. Um, so we try to see if there's any synergetic kind of connections as well in this process. So all that fine tuning happens throughout the end of September into October. And by the end of October, that's when the final ask should be kind of um, brought together and submitted. And those are the final ask that will be then given a slot in the community agenda vote for a two minute pitch. Um, so that's kind of the timeline of that. Then the vote happens. I already explained the Policy Advocacy 101 workshop. That's gonna be December 13th this year, a full day, 9 a.m. to five. And then we're going to do the agenda rollout January 17th um, in 2025. Um, so I don't know if there's any questions so far, but I will pass it back over to Andrea. If you want to click forward for me, Deja, that would be great. Oh, yeah. yeah. So now um, what you are actually bringing to us is a specific policy change. So we want to hear from you. And you, if you are thinking about pitching, you'll receive, all partners will receive a form which lays all this out that you're completing to bring, submit to us and bring to the discussion committees as Deja described. So a specific action that a government body should take in the coming year. This can be to pass a law, change a policy, fund a program. And we ask you um, in putting your proposal together, how again will it advance our collective mission for Buffalo Niagara? How will it advance racial equity? How do you engage folks affected by this issue? And then how can it be successful or make tangible progress in one year, which we'll talk more about. Um, we also ask you to think about how can PPG support this plank? Um, We'll talk more about that. And then also name partners that have agreed to be part of your working group. So we do require that at least a couple community organizations, nonprofits are part of um, bringing this to us. We have found if so agenda plank comes with only one partner, it's just very difficult to have the team, the bench, the capacity to come to elected official meetings, show up at the press conferences required. So we do want to have a little working group or coalition attached to each plank. So I'm gonna run down quickly the key requirements um, and then we can talk more about this as well. So again, we want to see one policy ask one specific policy change that you want to see. Because we do run this as an annual process, we have one year to work on your plank. Um, so we can accept one. This is a very random example that says, make housing in Buffalo more affordable by passing inclusionary zoning. We can't accept a plank that says, 
make housing in Buffalo or in Erie County more affordable at large and do that by one, passing inclusionary zoning in the city, two, passing developer incentives for affordable housing in the county, and three, passing a new voucher program at the state level, because that is, of course, three policy asks, three levels of government that would need to be engaged, three rounds of elected official meetings. Um, and in transparency, we did used to sometimes combine groups proposals and put together these basket planks like this, but it's too challenging because our 10 item community agenda quickly really becomes 20, 30 policy asks. And we really want to win items each year and be able to track our collective progress together. And we also, again, ask that you are putting together a plank that can be achievable within one year. Um, we, of course, things take longer than one year, but we're asking you to zoom in. What is a step? What is one policy program change that could happen? So we could accept a plank that says move 10% of the Buffalo police budget um, into community services like youth support, job development, drug user health programs. That's something that we could. Um, Deja, we can see your other screen. I just want you to know when you're switching. Um, if you wanna stop and reshare, that's totally fine. So we can't accept one that says, you know, abolish the Buffalo Police Department and replace it with an all civilian crime prevention force because that's not going to be a feasible one year change. And we do get pitches from time to time that are really kind of generational shifts. Um, so what we want to see is what's a piece of that that we can do together in one year. And then we again like to highlight that you should name at least two lead advocates for your agenda item. Um, we want to have progress and momentum this year. So we need to have you know at least two people that are gonna be consistent. Um, we ask that you as the lead organize a monthly coalition meeting on your plank. Um, very often items come into our agenda process that are part of a big existing working group. Um, so in recent years, we've had planks from the Good Food Buffalo Coalition. Um, that is an entity that now has 30 partners, right? So if they're pitching for us, that's not an issue. We do have many planks each year that are coming from just a couple groups. Maybe it's a block club and one advocacy group that have landed on an issue they wanna work on together. And we're saying, that's great. This can definitely be a startup, um, but we want you to be in the lead of that coalition building. And we want you to put together at least a monthly meeting that we can join to talk to you and the partners that you wanna engage on this. Um, we can definitely help to recommend here's five partners from across the PPG network that might be interested in the topic or the policy change that you're bringing. Here's four that actually brought a similar plank five years ago because so many of our issues circle back again. Um, but we're clear at PPG that we want to be there supporting our partners in the lead of the work. So this piece of really leading the coalition organizing is something that we want the partner to be uh, doing. You, we are asking that you speak to the topic at the community agenda rollout and help with turnout for that rollout announcement event where elected officials and media come out and then to join the long policy 101 training. Um, at that training, we run down how do you work with the media, work with elected officials and work with community partners to make policy change. Um, we often we'll bring in a couple staffers from elected officials that we know better um, and folks can actually role play and practice their pitches that they want to make in elected official meetings, practice taking some questions from a elected staffer who's pretending to be an elected official in this in this practice. So that's a really good um, a good full day of lots of training materials. And I think this is my part, right, Andrea? <laughs> I think so. Take it away. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Sorry, everyone. I was having technical difficulties. Every My screen disappeared and I couldn't see anything. 
Um, but so Andrea kind of explained um, some of our core requirements. Um, and now I'm kind of going to explain what PPG can do to support planks, um, because sometimes people get a little bit confused about what capacities that we will bring to plank items that are proposed. Um, so things that we do are like setting up government meetings, meetings with elected officials, we'll strategize about how to best advocate for your issue or cause. Um, we can do ish, um, research rather on your issue, collecting data, information. Um, and I want to emphasize that we don't just focus on um, kind of uh, just data as in numbers, but we also love um, storytelling because if as a community-based agenda, community stories and community experience are invaluable information to a lot of the causes and issues. And so we like to have that um, as a part. A really huge example is um, we just released a report on foster care. And within that report, our colleague Catlin um, and Megan, who was our MSW intern at the time, included um, personal stories of foster care alumni within the report of the data um, to show the tangible lived experience that relates and correlates to the data research that was conducted. So just a really good example of how we like to bridge that. Um, we also help with press conferences, media releases, um, how to strategize your talking points with the press around your issue. And we also like to make sure community is informed and engaged into issues as well. And so we will help coordinate town halls, community events, um, getting the information out there, advertising, promoting events. Um, we have our newsletter as Andrea mentioned, we're, we have a partner um, network of over 340 organizations, and a lot of the times different organizations may be interested in other cross-sectoral issues that are also on the agenda. And so we make sure everyone is informed and aware of the work that is going on on the community agenda within a given year as well. Um, once again, just in case there's any synergetic connections. Um, next is kind of what we don't do as much. And so what we really don't do is we can't lead the coalition or group that is really behind the work or agenda item that you've pitched onto the agenda. We very much emphasize that organizations or partners or groups that are trying to pitch on the agenda already have a formed partnership with at least one other organization or group to form a coalition, an alliance, um, anything, any way you wanna kind of describe it. But um, policy work and advocacy really takes a lot of time. And so we realize a lot of people who are pitching onto the agenda either have day jobs that may or may not correlate with their item that they're working on, or it does, but they're also an organization that does direct services or something like that. And so it's really helpful to share the burden of elected official meetings, press conferences, um, all of the follow-up and, and kind of in-person engagement that you have to do with another organization or group of people. And so it's very, very key that you have a very well um, supported group around your issue um, and we can help um, talk with you about how do you form a coalition or how do you go about something like that. We can definitely give some advice, but we can't be the ones actually leading the group for the entire year that your plank is on the agenda. Um, and so we just want to make sure that that's clear. Um, some planks and organizations, you already have huge existing coalitions or group meetings and everything. That's really awesome. Um, but we just, for those who are smaller, just want to make sure people have the support that they need. Um, the other thing that we can't do is, as I mentioned, some partners are direct service agencies or have very robust kind of, um, you know, or programming or different things like that. And we can't ask for funding for a specific organization to address an issue or a need. And so... Um, an example of this would be, you know, if an organization is serving youth that are homeless or something like that, we can't say, please give 
from the Erie County give $500,000 to this specific organization serving youth and homelessness, but we can say, can Erie County allocate $500,000 of funds for the youth homelessness population at large? And then usually county and government have an RFP process in which they give out that money to community organizations. And that's where we're really hands off. Um, that process is completely independent with the government organization, but we can be asking them to invest in issue areas or certain populations that are at risk within Western New York. Um, so just kind of making clear how we can go about budget ask or things like that. We're asking to fund specific populations or issue areas, not specific organizations. Um, and I'll let Andrea talk about some successful planks we've had in the past. So finally, and then we'll open this up for discussion and questions and more examples. Um, we just wanted to share we have had many policy victories with this process um, in about 15 years of doing it. Uh, most recently, we have won a budget line in the Erie County 2024 budget that's creating more programming for foster care alumni support in Erie County. Um, in 2020, we had a plank that called on Buffalo Common Council to repeal 13 traffic fees um, which they had added this menu of traffic fees that could be added to a fine for a parking or traffic ticket in the city of Buffalo. And that made the city the highest fee structure in all of New York state, um, which raised a lot of economic justice concerns. And so Buffalo Common Council heard that call and repealed it, um, which I have to say was a remarkable campaign because they had actually only adopted that fee schedule one to two years before. Um, so it's a funny experience for us as, as staff, as the team. We don't know what will get voted onto the agenda each year. And sometimes things come on and we think, oh, that is going to be a really challenging political lift, but then sometimes those can push right through. Um, in 2020, we also won the adoption of interior rental inspection legislation for the city of Buffalo. Um, that's one that has been in the news this year because it is not being implemented. So we're now pushing for that. Um, but we were part of getting that adopted in 2020. We had a wonderful plank from the Western New York Youth Climate Council, and it was amazing to have high school and college students in the lead of a plank. They asked the city of Buffalo to adopt a climate emergency declaration, which they did. And the goal of the youth was really that in planning and policy decisions, the city would have to do more of a climate impact assessment as they go forward. Um, and then we had a plank as well to end the lowest level marijuana arrests in the city of Buffalo before it was legalized across the state. We did a data report and eight out of 10 people arrested for lowest level possession were black in the city of Buffalo. So there were big racial disparities and um, we managed to get that through as well. We then also will have some, if you go to the next slide, Deja, that are focused on neighborhood planning, economic development issues as well. Um, so years back, an agenda plank was to pass um, state land bank legislation so that the local land bank could really dig into addressing vacant and abandoned housing as part of their work. Um, of course, it is an ongoing campaign led by many of our partners, but we have over the years won transparency and other commitments to improve conditions at the Erie County Holding Center. Um, we've had partners bring a whole range of complete streets, safe streets legislation um, that has been adopted. And of course, implementation is ongoing for so many of these. And then there's interesting examples where the partners that will bring to the community agenda some statewide campaigns. Um, maybe they are the Western New York anchor of a statewide um, legislative campaign. In this last example, it was to win paid family leave in New York State. Um, and then we were able to work with the Western York Women's Foundation and other partners to say, how would this affect Buffalo, Niagara? What's the big um, subset of partners here that would want that? Um, again, collecting stories and bringing those to the Western New York delegation of our state representatives from Western New York. So those are some examples. Um, and then I would really encourage you, if you're just here to kind of check this out and find out what is this process, um, definitely come out to the vote. 
all partners are also welcome to come to those um, agenda discussion committees, which are really great because even if you are new to policy or have not led an advocacy or legislative campaign, you are a, a voter, a consumer of all that kind of information. And so we will sometimes have partners who are environmentalists from the Elmwood Village give their advice to the partners leading on solitary confinement reform for how can you message that so it will land with me and be more compelling at, at our voting event too. Um, and then our vote is really just one of the most um, motivating events of the year. In recent years, I should share that we have had about 18 to 20 pitches um, of planks, and then that gets voted down to the 10. In years before that, we have sometimes had maybe just 14, 15 getting pitched, um, but we have had some peak years in recent years with about 20 um, getting getting pitched into the vote as well.